Good morning. Welcome to the Crystal Crawford Show. I'm Crystal Crawford. And today you have caught me in a bit of a place. <laughs> so I'm going to put that as a caveat. Now, nobody's watching live right now, so you're going to be watching this in the future. Um, but if you're watching live right now, I'm just putting a disclaimer on this episode that it may or may not be a little more potent than usual. So good morning. Hi, thanks for joining me live. If you think other people should be subject to the same treatment, you should share this. <laughs> <laughs> so today I want to riff in and around on the topic of me too, hashtag me too. Now this is not going to be a typical me too conversation. I'm sure all of you that typically watch my stuff are shocked and surprised at that. Um, but I have a, the, the, the way this topic came about was, well, one, I've been wanting to talk about it for a long time. Uh, ever since I started seeing it on Facebook, it's been something that I haven't really commented on, haven't written anything about. Um, and since the abuse class has come up in a really different way for me, I am creating a telecall called, well, it, yesterday it was called changing the lies that you're broken. Now I've had a lot of interest in the call. I've had a lot of people looking at the call, um, and not a lot of people choosing it. Hi, Michelle. And so that prompted me to ask some more questions. And one of the things that I became aware of in the creation of this call, and this is relevant to the me too thing was that creating or changing the lies that you're broken is a statement that assumes that you have lies in your world that uh, you have a lie in your world that you're broken and you either have to align and agree with that or resist and react to that which is not actually a great way to create a class like you either have to agree with your broken and change that or you have to not be broken and you have to resist it so i started asking some questions about this topic and what this topic is for me because i did just come out of a class with access and so this this whole changing the things that pin abuse into our lives in really weird ways or that we start creating our lives from in really weird ways is really up. And it's something that I want to create more change around. And I had to start getting honest with myself about what the conversation really was for me. And the thing for me about this topic is, and the thing that really sticks in my craw about the Me Too movement is that there are truths with lies attached. So we have this place where we are... Um, there's a lot of really great things changing with the Me Too thing. One of the really great things that I think the greatest thing that's changing is that people aren't keeping people's secrets anymore. Um, there's still some of that going on, I'm sure, but for the most part, it's now being encouraged to like, hey, out with the secrets. Like, we don't need to like protect these guys anymore. Like, this is still, this is stupid. People are being mean and other people are being mistreated and that needs to stop. That part, awesome, fucking right. Don't keep abusers secrets. Like if, if you've got something going on in your family, like, and you've been not sharing about it, not talking about it, cut that shit out and start talking about it because nothing actually needs to be secret anymore. It's really, really time. Hi, Nikki. Hi, Catherine. That we, we talk about that. Awesome. Thing number two about the Me Too movement that is, that's sort of bugging me like crazy is that there's this overarching understanding that there's victims and there's perpetrators. There's a victim and there's a perpetrator. And that's the way it is. The end. No more questions about that. Sort of like you need to drink eight glasses of water a day. I just watched this video from this doctor in down in Virginia that does all these videos basically debunking health myths. And one of them is you have to drink eight glasses of water a day. Well, who says? Hey, if you guys like this, will you share it? And like getting the word out. I need some help. Um... Okay, so eight glasses of water a day. Is that actually true? Does your body actually require that much water? Who says that? Who is they? Anyway, what are all these things that we just naturally buy into that aren't based in any sort of fact or truth or what makes you lighter? They're just based on somebody said this is the way it was and we just bought it and we went along with it. We never asked any questions. So the thing about the Me Too movement, it is assumes there's a victim and there's a perpetrator. Well, I've been really looking at the, the places where we intentionally, maybe not with our brains, but intentionally disempower ourselves. And it's really bizarre how much we do that. And it's raised this conversation in my world of like, what am I actually committed to? Now, if you're in any of my classes, you've heard some of this already, and you can hang up if you want to, because I kind of went on a tirade today. I've already done three videos. <laughs> But like, what am I actually committed to? 
So I was in the abuse class over the last three days in, in uh, Houston, and I'm still listening to the audios, and it is like changing my reality. But guess where it's changing my reality the most? Acknowledging what's really true. And the pieces that are really true for me got covered over with all the stuff that wasn't true. And the stuff that wasn't true was, was that I was a victim. That not true, not make me feel lighter, did not give me more freedom, did not empower me. Um, the mm, assuming things about the people that did things to me, like actually projecting onto them agendas and things like that, that they didn't have. They were actually just being mean. They were just being abusive. I projected all these things. Well, they loved me. They cared about me. They did all these things that may or may not actually be true. So getting really present with what's really true about the people that are doing stuff that actually is unkind to me and not, not covering it over with some sort of projection or some sort of story. And, and in truth, getting out of all the stories altogether. And, you know, last week or the week before that, I can't remember, I did a show called The Gift of Abuse. And I did another show in follow-up to that with another lady who was asking me about that. I guess some of her friends kind of got pissed about like the gift of abuse. And it was at, during that conversation with her that I realized that anything that goes on in your life can be taken 25,000 different ways. You can be, you can go through a rape and come out of that a greater person, and you can go through a rape and be completely destroyed. You can go through child sexual, sexual abuse and come out of that a kind, giving, like generosity of spirit person, or you can come out of that totally destroyed. You have absolute choice. And the thing that I think the biggest disservice that, that this reality does is tell us that we don't have that much choice. That we are actually in this reality disempowered to the nth degree and then we take that up and we disempower ourselves. You know, you have total choice in every single minute with your business, for example, of whether or not you actually make yourself take those steps to actualize and institute something. You've got that choice. You've got choice in all of your relationships to institute and actualize a different way of being in that relationship. And you don't always necessarily know what it's going to take, but you always have that choice. And here's the thing that I realized. We don't actually want that much choice. And I'm speaking for myself here. You know, I started looking at all the places in my life where I would really rather buy the story than have total choice. And it was cool because I just got to look at it and I'm like, wow, I really would rather be disempowered here than I would rather have the choice. Because if I've got the choice, I don't, there is nothing stopping me but me. There's nothing stopping me but my story that I can't or this energy's in my way or I can't do this or I've got this problem or whatever. You know, and that's where I saw that a lot of the Me Too movement is there's gift and there's lies. And you've got to like you've got to start looking at this for yourself. If you really want to change your life, you can keep coming from the place that you're you are innately a problem that you have to fix or that somewhere there's something right about you that you're not getting. You get to choose that. You get to choose like how your life gets created. You get to choose from where you create your life. Are you actually a problem that you need to pock and pot and clear and change and do all this changing to? Or are you a gift? Is it possible that you could flip one point of view and actually have another point of view? Is it possible that change is as easy as just choosing to look at something different? What are you truly committed to? Are you truly committed to failing? Or are you truly committed to succeeding? And here's where I got that it really doesn't matter. I, I started having a point of view about this. This is what I started to get for myself. I was like, I really had a point of view. I wanted all of you to be committed to succeeding and being empowered and like, you know, creating your businesses and creating your life. Like I had an agenda for you guys. I had an agenda for myself. I didn't have truly total allowance for whatever it was people were choosing. And I had to start to look at that for myself of like, what if I did, what if I could include like total allowance for everything that I would choose, everything that you would choose, everything that a life could be, every, every gift that a abuse could be to a life, whether that be for total choice or whether that be for complete and disempowerment and what, do, and then bringing it back to my life going, what do I want to choose with this? Do I want to keep walking around my life as a victim? Or do I want to walk around my life as like, no, man, I'm empowered. I had choice then. And sure, did some people, were some people mean at me? Yeah, totally. 
where some people do people throw around sexual abuse and verbal abuse and you know stuff like that and was I in the way and was I the primary key target yes do I continue to choose to be the target for my family still today sometimes is that changing yes that's it and you know what that it, it's the, it really ties into last week's episode of like I'm choosing this because I'm choosing this because I'm choosing this like there's no reason for what I'm choosing I'm just choosing this so as a kid I chose to go into my family did I choose the abuse no did I create the abuse no did the other people in my life choose to make me the primary target yes did I then buy into a lot of that oh my god I'm I'm wrong yes I did that did I know any different did I have different information no does that make that my fault no it just makes that what's occurred. That's just what occurred. And so now with different information, I can make different choices. And then that is the gift of consciousness, you guys. And I don't know why that makes me cry, but it's like, that's the gift of consciousness in your world is that you can actually make different choices now. Not from the space that you're fucked up, because you are not fucked up. You are more powerful and more capable than you've ever been willing to see. And the fact that we can go through a childhood and we can receive abuse, we can experience abuse from all the different directions, and we can get here is a fucking miracle. You're a fucking miracle. You're not a victim. You're a miracle. And so what are you choosing to align and agree with or resist and react to that's sticking just lies in place that you could go, what do I actually want to create as my life? Do I, you know, and I, I really, I keep getting the hit to read this to you. I read this to some other peeps this morning, but I keep, so in the advanced money workbook, this show isn't about money, but everything's about money. Your life is about money. Your life is about business. If you're breathing, your life is the creation of money and business and your life. Like there's no separation between any of it. And the thing you got to look at is like, if you're choosing to be a victim in one area, where are you choosing to be a victim in other areas? And is it actually true for you? Are you really and truly a victim of anything, of your wife, of your, you can choose to be that. You can choose to be that, but you got to start to acknowledge where you're choosing to be that and what you're actually committed to. So listen to this. So page 98, committing to you. Gary says, I had a conversation with a guy who said he was stuck in not committing to himself. He said, I'm really good at creating distractions in my life. When I sit down to do something, I create a distraction or an excuse so I don't have to do it. I start to do things, but I can't complete them. And I said, you're actually very committed. You're committed to creating excuses and never completing anything. And he said, I would like to change that. And I said, you can't. And he said, I can't. And I, and I said, you won't. And he said, I would like to. Do you guys get that energy when he says, I would like to change that? I would like to. There's no choice in that. There's no, I'm fucking changing this. Fuck you. I'm changing it. Right? That's a choice. That's a demand. That's a like, I'm changing this thing. I said, that's nice. You won't. And he said, I will. And I asked, okay, are you sure? He said, yes. I said, swear on a stack of Bibles, swear on the teachings of Buddha. And he laughed kind of sheepishly, sheepishly. And he's like, I would not say yes. It's like, oh, when it gets to that point, mm, no, I can't do that. Which means there's no actual choice there. And look, a lot of this stuff, there's been, I would say probably in the last three months for me, has been the time where I've really, really gotten to look at this topic. Like, what am I truly committed to? You know? And there's been a lot of shit to use tools about for me. You know, there was a lot of stuff that it covered over what I'm actually capable of. I had covered it over with a lot of judgment and a lot of decisions and a lot of conclusions. And you may be right there right now. You may, you know, this may be a lasagna for you where you're who you actually be is at the bottom of the lasagna. And if that's you, take two more steps. Keep using these tools. Keep using interesting point of view. I have this point of view. Keep using who does it belong to because it fucking works. And if you just want to jump ahead, also look at Hey, what am I truly committed to here? So this guy, here's what Gary said about this guy. I said, you're more committed to failure than you are success. You're more committed to stopping yourself than making yourself go. If you really want to change this, you've got a demand of yourself. No matter what it takes, no matter who I lose, no matter what occurs, I'm changing this. Enough. This is insanity. So every time you, you sit down to do something and you make an excuse and you say, enough, I'm not going to have an excuse anymore. My excuses are gone. I'm now completing this. And then you make yourself do it. 
And here's what I see so many times, and this goes hand in hand with the me too. Me too, I was hurt too. You know, which means you get to like, you get to be hurt, you get to be the victim. I'm not making you wrong if that's been you. I'm not making you wrong. I'm asking you to look at it. I'm asking all of us to get really brutally honest with ourselves because I think this is the piece we just miss out on. We like try to find, like we come from this place, this assumption that we've got a problem that we have to fix, but that very assumption takes you out of awareness. This very assumption takes you out of awareness. It takes you out of, hey, what is this? What can I do with it? Can I change it? How can I change it? So if you want to get this to work, if you want to get your life to work, you're going to make yourself do it. It's a choice that you have to make. The only person in the world who makes you do what you don't want to do is you. You've got a desire. You desire not to do it far more than you desire to do it. Isn't that clever? You say, I'm changing this, and then you freaking change it. That's the power and the potency that we actually have available to us. Instead of going into the story of why we can't or the story of, I think this is this way because of da, 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 what can I do to clear it? You've already gone into a reason and a justification why you're limited, and now you can't change it because you're justifying and you're trying to change the justification instead of looking at the energy of just, I'm stopping myself. I'm not showing up in my life. I'm choosing to be, I'm, I'm broke. What is that? What can I do to change it? How can I change it, right? Instead of stopping just there at the choice, at the creation, we go into the reason and the justification for it, which is a lot of what Me Too does. It's the reason and the justification that my life's not working. But there is no reason and justification that your life's not working. It's just what we've bought into. It's just a choice. And I fucking hated this as a reality when I first started Access Consciousness because I was so good. It was so good. I was the master. I should teach a class on feelings. I was so good at doing feelings and I was so good at doing stories. I just didn't know that's what I was doing. And listen, access consciousness is not for the faint of heart. It's for the brave and the courageous. I love that Simone Melissa says that. And that's what I wrote. Consciousness is not for pussies. Like, just don't watch my shit. If it... <laughs> If everything that I say rubs you the wrong way, don't watch my shit because I'm always going to be like, hey, how can we get more honest with ourselves? Because why? Because if you truly get honest with yourself about where you're functioning from, about what your platform truly is, about what you're actually committed to, that's when you have the capacity to change it right at that moment. When you truly acknowledge I am more committed to failure and I'm more committed to stopping than I am succeeding, that's when you have you. Right at that moment, You've been honest. You've been able to fully acknowledge what you're actually choosing. And that takes fucking balls. Because guess what? That also doesn't mean anything about you. That doesn't mean that you're broken. That doesn't mean that there's something wrong with you. That just means that at that moment, that is so much more important to you than anything else. Why? Because it is. Why do people abuse? Because they do. Because there's insane people, because mean is a choice, just like nice is a choice, just like kindness is a choice, mean is a choice. Why do people sexually abuse? Because they do. Because insanity is a thing in this reality. It exists. You have to be willing to look at what exists. You have to be willing to look at what your mother's choosing that you totally don't want to look at and, and, and see. You've got to be willing to look at what your dad is choosing that you totally don't want to look at and see. You've got to be willing to look at what you're choosing that you don't want to look at and see. What is it that I have not been willing to see and know about myself that I've ever willing to see and know about myself would give me total choice is my demand. Sometimes it's fucking ugly. You know, I've been going through the 10 keys to total freedom and I'm about to do it again for those of you guys that want to come with me. And, you know, I'm going through these chapters having to acknowledge I function from total competition. I do exclusion dynamically. I want, and this is the thing about having your awareness of what is, what is, what is, what is, is that you don't exclude any of your awareness because you want to believe something else or because this is easier over here. And having all of your awareness is what gives you the power. That's what empowers you. Do you actually want to be empowered? You got to look at that. Do you really want to be empowered? If you're empowered, that means you have the capacity to do fucking anything. You can create anything if you're empowered. Do you really, truly desire to be empowered? The most empowering thing you can do for yourself in that moment is really look at that and go, be honest, truth, do I? No, I really would rather not be empowered. I'm way more committed to that. 
guess what that does? <laughs> that empowers you. <laughs> so Gary goes, you're willing to commit to almost anything else, to failure, to having a problem, to having a limitation, to finding the limitations. You will commit to any of those things, but not to you. You're not actually stuck. You are sticking yourself. You just flat out refuse to do anything. You're a refusenik. And a refusenik was a person in the former Soviet Union who was refused permission to immigrate, in particular a Jew who couldn't immigrate to Israel. It's also a person who refuses to follow orders or obey the law, especially as a protest. It's a person who's not comfortable with the system or who won't comply with the law because of a moral conviction. So what are you refusing to be that you could be? That if you would be it would change your entire financial reality. And everything that is times a godzillion, will you destroy and uncreate it all? Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pock, all nine shorts, poison, beyonds. And if you're new to the clearing statement, go to theclearingstatement.com and get more info. Please look at this, Gary says. There is only one person who can stick you. Nobody else can stick you. You are the only one that has that kind of power. Why is that power more important to you than the power of creation receiving an enthusiasm? It's like you are stuck so that you can be unenthusiastic about your life. You're not willing to change everything in your life. And you know, if this is reading for you, all you have to do is sit with that. I'm not willing to change everything in my life. I would rather be unenthusiastic about my life. So who or what are you refusing to lose that if you lost them would allow you to have too much friggin' money? <laughs> and everything that is, will you destroy and create it all? Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. What are you actually committed to? What are you truly committed to? Are you committed to being the victim and really justifying that story? Because that story is justifiable, y'all. It is. You can find shit to justify that easily. It's called evidentiary contrivance. You take a point of view and you find the shit that justifies it. I do it all the time and I catch myself more and more and more these days because I'm really kind of tired of being disempowered. What are you committed to? Are you committed to your story of being a victim? It's not making you wrong. It's like, okay, yeah, I really like that story more than I would like to know what is true. Okay, cool. From that place, you've got power. Because from that place, you're acknowledging that you're the choosing one. You are the choosing one. Did you experience ridiculous shit? Yes. Do, pe do people do ridiculous shit, mean shit, cruel shit? Yes. Did some of that happen to you? Yes. Cool. Did you create that? No, you were a kid. You were a convenient target in the way of insane people. Did you choose your family? Yes. What did you choose? What did you know when you chose your family? What awareness did you get that you could now have right now that would completely change your reality? Yeah, evidentiary contrivance is my new brand name. I love you, Frank. <laughs> I get it. And I was committed to changing abuse and in doing so, I was always looking for it and believing it was true. Yes. Y'all, you can't change insane people. Insane people are choosing insanity. What you can change is acknowledging what is. You can fucking change that. You know why? You know how I know? You're listening to my ass. Listen, I am... I'm not in the camp of fuck that shit. All right. Frank's got a different camp. You got to see what camp you're in. Frank knows what camp he's in. He's got a flag. He designed it himself. <laughs> it's attractive. <laughs> what camp are you in? Where are you camping? Are you in the camping? Are you camping in I can't? And here's why. Is that where you've made your home? Are you camping in, I can, and I don't care what it takes, I'm going to do it. I'm going to show up. I'm going to be uncomfortable. I'm going to go around and beyond anything that I ever decided or ever saw or even thought was possible because I'm having my fucking life. Sorry, guys. Me too doesn't apply here. Did bad shit happen to me? Yes. Am I a victim? Mm-mm. I am powerful beyond measure. And I would way rather be powerful than I would be pathetic. I fucking love you, Frank Fredella. Listen, if what's coming out of this for you is that you'd way rather be pathetic, you are not wrong. You are powerful beyond measure. But you got to look at that. 
you got to look at where you're choosing to be pathetic. You got to look at where you're choosing to be the victim. You got to look at where you're choosing your stories over your choices. That's it. That's all you got to look at. Once you can get present with what you're really committed to, what you are really, really putting all your energy into, that's when you have more choice. That's all that's required. Consciousness includes everything and judges nothing. So in the in chapter 10 in this book, this ridiculous book that nobody ever reads that I'm going to go through again in a week if you guys want to come. I don't have a link yet, of course. Chapter 10 is no exclusion. Guess what that means? You don't exclude any of your awareness. You don't exclude what you're choosing all the time with 24 seven. You don't exclude the awareness of insanity. You don't exclude the awareness of meanness. You don't exclude the awareness of crazy. You don't exclude the awareness of gentle and kind. You don't exclude. Guess what that gives you? All the power, all the things. If you're willing to know exactly what is with no point of view, which by the way is a bit of a process, you gotta use these tools dynamically all the time, 24 seven to get yourself out of the shit because we're so psychic, we picked up on the insanity of this reality. You're psychic, you picked up on all that shit, you've been creating your life from that shit. It doesn't actually work for you unless it does and that's what you gotta acknowledge of like, oh, I really like functioning like this. You know, like today I had to acknowledge I was enjoying being pissed off. I was enjoying it. Was I being kind to me and other people? Not necessarily. Was it creating change? Yes. All right, fine. Can I change it in a second? Yes. Just like that. But I'm just acknowledging, yeah, I'm creating this. Guess what? Consciousness includes everything and judges nothing. So no judgment of anywhere you're functioning from is actually consciousness. Aligning and agreeing and resisting and reacting is anti-consciousness. So are you using me too as a way to create anti-consciousness on the planet or as a way to create more awareness of what occurred so that you can be fucking empowered? What would you rather choose? What would you rather be committed to? You? The power of you? The magic of you? The miracle of you? The gift of you that you might not be able to see yet? Or the story? Listen, your story can be used to create a totally different reality as long as you're not using it to limit you. Your story is a powerful piece of what you came here and experienced. It's, it's powerful if you don't use it to limit you, although it's very powerful if you use it there too. You can use it in any way you want. And this is the thing, abuse can be a story, a limitation, or a fucking gift. And you get to choose what that is. You choose that. You choose that in every 10 seconds, in every piece of the way you create your life. You choose that. And, you know, I've had a few people be pissed off that I'm calling abuse a gift. And I realized, like, I wasn't giving them enough choice. Actually, abuse can be a story. It can be a limitation. It can be the biggest defining thing in your life. Your heart attack can be the biggest defining thing in your life. Your divorce, your affair, your kids not talking to you anymore. Those can be the biggest thing about you. Or they can be something that occurred that you are now creating around and beyond. You choose that, not me. You know, and then, and then sometimes these movements start, right? And we jump on that bandwagon. We're like, yeah. And sometimes it's reverse. It's like, yeah, fuck those, fuck those men. Well, here we go again. We're back into polarity. That's great. You know, what a choice. What if you didn't have to choose polarity? What if you could actually choose your reality and find out what that is and demand that you create it and demand that you have it. What about that choice? What, who's talking about that choice? You know, so is it great that the secrets are coming out? Yes. Expose, expose the lies, expose the, expose the meanness. Let's do that. Let's just not throw all the fucking babies out with the bathwater with them. You know, now, now all the women in Hollywood are rising up and take, is that great? Yes. Does that mean anything about the men? Fucking no. There's so many gifts walking around. Some have penises, some have vaginas. They're all, you know, various shades of gift. What do you want to create as your reality? It could be the thing that makes you awesome. Exactly. So here's what's true. I had mean people in my life when I was growing up. They weren't always mean. They were sometimes mean. I had sexually abusive people in my life. They weren't always sexually abusive. They were sometimes sexually abusive. I got a lot of good shit out of my childhood. I got a lot of shitty shit out of my childhood. All of it has contributed to the person that I am today. And today I'm choosing to create my life in a way that works for me. And the thing that I want to look at, that I want to invite you to look at is what am I actually committed to? And am I more committed to me failing than I am succeeding? And if that's true, I want to change that. 
but not from resistance from like, I would actually, I would actually like to create the reality that I'm aware of. And you know, the reality I'm aware of it has allowance and kindness and gentleness and inclusion. That's the reality I'm aware of. And I know the people that watch me have similar things going on. Yes, John, same for racism. It's not about the racism anymore. It's about what's beyond it. It's about the reality that includes infinite beings. So what did you come here to create? Did you come here to continually support some point of view you bought back in the day that you can't do it? Did you come here to continually support? I love you, John Ashford. Did you come here to continually support that you can't because? Is that what you came here to create? Is that the place you want to create from? I can't because? Or did you come here to create something else? And if you're already doing it, fuck yeah. Turn it up. And if you aren't yet choosing it, just change. This is your capacity. This is the phenomenon of you. You can just change. And one of the first things you can change is just acknowledging what's true in this very moment. That takes balls to really look at what you're truly choosing and not see yourself as a problem. That takes courage because you're not a problem. You're just potent. And you can as easily tug disaster into your life as you can tug miracles. And so you do because you're not acknowledging that you're using your capacity against you. That's it. You have the capacity, you tug, things show up. You tug disaster, disaster shows up. You tug money, money shows up. You tug reality, new reality, new reality shows up. That's how powerful you are. Are you willing to know that? Are you willing to have that as your reality? And if it's no, just sit with that and be like, no, I don't wanna fucking be that powerful. That's a pain in the ass, you know? Go smoke something. That's fine. It really is fine. <laughs> this is my fine face. <laughs> It's fucking fine, all right? But we will miss you. And that's okay too. You choose, you create. You choose what you create with what you've chosen, with what you create. What can you create today using what you've already chosen to go through? If you didn't have to align and agree or resist and react, if your story didn't have to be your biggest limitation, but it could be one of the biggest contributing factors, how can you use it? What conversations can you start? And where can you begin to really, really acknowledge what you're truly committed to? And then see if you want to change that. See if you actually want to create from that place. All right, my strong talk today is over. The beatings will continue until morale improves, like Dane says. And uh, if you like this and you think it will contribute to anybody else, feel free to share it. I adore your fucking faces off. You're amazing. You're a miracle. Go be that.